Hello everyone, my name is Sakshi Kushwaha and welcome back to yet another video on machine learning model tutorial. So in this video, we take a new problem which is mushrooms classification and we have to build a model for the classification of mushrooms and these mushrooms are in two categories, P and E, the name of the, those categories. So we have to, uh, this is a binary classification problem and we have to build a model for the same. And then we uh, finally we predict the model and to find the accuracy of this model. Okay, so these are uh, the eight steps which is which are necessary for building any model. The first step is import libraries. So you have to just imported libraries. So import pandas as first library pandas as pd. Okay, and the read uh, read data. So uh, I have downloaded a data set which is mushrooms.csv file from the Kaggle, okay? If you want to see the structure of this mushrooms.csv uh, file, then I opened it. Yeah, this is the structure of our file. This is the class and we have to predict these are two classes, we have P or E. So this is the binary classification problem. We have to, this is our target, okay? So if you want to download it, you have to just type on Google mushrooms, uh, mushrooms classification, classification data set Kaggle. Okay. Yeah, this is the first link. And from, uh, by registering in this uh, Kaggle uh, website, you have to just download your uh, mushrooms classification, okay? So these are the data set. Like this is a CSV file, you have to just click on here. Okay, you have to just uh, sign, in with, sign in with Google and you have successfully downloaded your uh, this file, okay? So for reading the data, you have to just write, uh, I give the name function uh, df, then you have to just write pd.readcsv because this is a csv file and I give the path of that file, uh, okay. So if you want to see the structure of our uh, uh, file, then you have to just uh, type here df dot tail or head if you whatever you want i just type tail and three uh, rows i want only okay so this is the structure of our data set these are all the columns and this is a class which is a feature we have which we we have to predict okay and if you want to uh, some more functions are there df dot info So this gives the all information about your data set. If you want to see, want the description of our data set, you have to just write description, sorry, describe, describe. So this function describes your data set, okay? Like there are 8124 rows and all, okay? And the third step is uh, define target and feature. So there is a mistake, the target values are X, and the feature, yeah, target is, uh, sorry, target is Y and the feature is X, okay? So for defining it, you have to just uh, know what are the name of your uh, columns, data columns. So you have to just write, these are the columns and this is a class which we have to uh, predict. This is a target, okay? So you have to just write Y is equal to df and here you give the name of this column class okay and there is a one more function there is uh, the name of that function is df dot for so it gives the correlation uh, between uh, classes okay
So I think there is a misconception of the core. Yeah, this is a function. So it defines the uh, relation, correlation between all the columns. Okay. So I think this is a string data. So this function uh, doesn't work here. So there's a no need of this function. You have to just write uh, y is equal to class and x is equal to x is a 2D data. So all the other uh, columns which are not uh, in not target, not in the target, then all are in the feature. The more you feature, the more uh, the more accurate your prediction is. Okay. So you have to just define y and x and if you want to check the shape of your um, if target and features you have to just write x dot shape and y dot shape okay so this is the shape like uh, there are 8124 rows 8124 rows and 22 columns are there and the y is a uh, 1d array so this there are only rows and single column okay so for yeah guys so there uh, like you see uh, like the class is in the not the it is a binary classification problem but it is not in the uh, not in the form of numerical data like uh, this class have uh, two values e or p not zero one so you have to firstly convert uh, your class values to zero or one okay so for this you we use label encoder so you all uh, you thought what is label encoder so it is a bonus step for those uh, for those problems which contains a string which is a uh, classification problem but contains a string so how can you classify in zero or one type uh, zero or one type because it is a binary classification problem so a step it is a bonus step you have to just write here bonus yeah so uh, like what is the label encoder if you want to uh, know label encoder in machine uh, SQL learning or machine learning you have to just write here so uh, what is this SQL and label encoder so SQL and label encoder is a process of converting categorical values to numeric values okay so we have a categorical values uh, two categorical values so we have to convert it into numerical values so that machine learning model can understand the data and find hidden patterns Although there are various ways for classific uh, categorical encoding and SQL encoder is one of them. So if you want to uh, see what is a label encoder. So I think you all know about the label encoder. Yeah. You have to just write these functions. These are examples you can refer. You can go and refer from this. Okay. Yeah. So you have to just uh, write here use of sklearn library so you have to just write from sklearn dot preprocessing there is an automatic uh, yeah sklearn preprocessing import uh, import label encoder okay label encoder is that correct yeah and you have to just write here label encoder okay now we have to uh, transform our y means uh, transform our target okay so you have to just write here it is a single column so you have to just write y is equal to at least a label encoder dot fit transform transform y so y successfully transform into numerical values if you want to see now y so the y is array of 1010 okay okay and uh, the same we do for the uh, for the features also because features are also in the category like here you see f n and s y okay cups and is s y s so these are the categorical values so you have to just uh, write uh, same for the uh, features also so you have to just write uh, features are more so you have to, uh, these are 2 drf so you have to write for i in x and here xi is equal to 
uh, the same we write le dot fit transform trans uh, transform s of i okay so this line successfully converts uh, features and targets into a numerical value okay so the next step is uh, the step four is train test and explain so you have to just type from sk as you are as we already know sk learn sk learn dot uh, dot model selection dot model selection import uh, train test and speed is a function so you have to just write train test split okay and here you write x train x test y train y test and apply the function train test split okay and here you uh, provide the variable x y and the size test size okay so you have to provide the test size by default it is 70 uh, 75 to 35 ratio but i provided 70 to 30 ratio okay so test is a 0 0.3 it is in probability and we provide random state uh, i provide something with some value yeah 74 uh, 9878 whatever you value you want to give okay so it successfully uh, split your training and testing data set and you have to just write if you want to check the shape of your train and test data so you have to just write shape s test dot shape uh, y test dot shape and y train by train dot shape so there is an error because I misconstruct the spelling x train here okay t r a i yeah so the firstly uh, if you see it uh, it splits into these uh, number of rows 5686 rows in a training data set and 2438 rows in testing data set okay so the next step is identify a type of problem so you already know this is a classification problem as it is already mentioned this is a binary classification problem so yeah and we have to select the model so there are many uh, many models as you already know logistic regression is one of them and decision tree uh, and uh, random uh, random forest okay so i am hearing use random forest algorithm so from sklearn dot model selection import sorry 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 uh, sklearn dot ensemble because we are used to uh, ensemble we are going to use random forest so random forest classifier because it is a classification problem and here you write model is equal to random uh, forest classifier okay and if we you if you use logistic regression then you have to provide a max item here but here we use random forest classifier so there is no need to give max item okay so the model is successfully built and we have to train our model so you have to just write model dot fit x train uh, x train and uh, x test the training data set you give uh, sorry x train and y train So yeah, your model is successfully trained and if you want to predict your model, so you have to just write y fred is equal to model dot predict and here you give uh, x test because testing value. Okay?
and if you want to see the values predicted by a model y fred is this array is 0 and 1 okay and the actual y is y test here so yeah the first value it is predicted 0 and the actual value is also 0 and the second value it is predicted by 1 and it is uh, actual value is also 1 so it is uh, predicted right values correct values okay so this is a uh, the this is the last step of our tutorial step 8 in which we find the accuracy of our model so for finding accuracy you have to just import uh, matrices uh, import uh, classification report and all so you have to just write from sklearn dot matrices import classification report yeah so the classification report and the second one is accuracy score accuracy score and the third one is confusion matrix okay, okay. confusion matrix okay yeah so now uh, if you want to check the accuracy score of this then you have to just write accuracy score and here you give y test comma y predicted uh, yeah so the accuracy score is one so it the algorithm is very good i think if you use a logistic regression and all then it gives a less accuracy like 96 or 98 percent but it gives 100 percent accuracy for this data set only okay so it's a very uh, good data set uh, good algorithm so if you use confusion matrix confusion matrix and give the same thing y test and y predicted okay so yeah here you uh, give, see the confusion matrix so there are uh, this is a confusion matrix so there are two classes there are total of one two five three rows and there and the class it gives the accurate accuracy okay so that it have a zero and zero value here okay so this is a uh, suppose this is a p category and this is a e, e category so in p category there are all the p value it predicted and the, in e category there are all e value predicted so it predicts 100 uh, percent accuracy and if you want to see the classification report so you have to just write classification report yeah classification report and just you have to write y test and the y pred predicted and if you see here this is a classification report it gives the accuracy is 1% f1 score and f1 score is also 1% so there is a very good this algorithm works very good in this our own data set so um, I there's a homework for you like you have to try with an, uh, other algorithms like logistic regression and decision tree and all and all other algorithms you have to just try with those algorithms and compare the accuracy of those algorithm and uh, and uh, tell me in the comment section which algorithm performs best okay so yeah till then take care bye bye and give your best